is Mrs. Goodman, and this is my sixth grade class, and we're so excited to hear you today. Great, thank you. I am so excited to be with you, and I'm looking forward to this. This is uh, my first video conference this week, so uh, that should be really fun. I'm hoping for all of us. Well, we're ready. Great, thank you all very much. I appreciate your listening today. So, my name is Adora Speedhawk, and if you're wondering why a 12 year old is teaching you today, well, at the age of seven, I published my first book called Flying Fingers Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And more recently, I published a second book. It's called Dancing Fingers, and it's a book of poetry that I co authored with my older sister, Adriana. So, I really love to write, especially poetry. I published a book of it, and I think that Poetry is one of the coolest things that you can do. Well, for one, it's convenient. You can just sit down and write it pretty much anywhere. And for a second, one of my favorite types of poetry you do is writing funny poems. So what do you think makes something funny? Any ideas? What do you think makes something funny? Randomness. Randomness? Yes, that's, that definitely contributes. Randomness, what else? Weird animals. Weird animals. <laughs> Definitely. Megan. Some made up words. Made up words. That's right. Have any of you ever read the poem Jabberwocky? Um, yeah. yeah. I hear that. I hear yeah. some yeses. I hear some noises. Jabberwocky. Uh, what's funny about Jabberwocky is that a lot of it is made up words. But what's even funnier is that because that poem, we got some new words in the English language. So, kind of interesting idea. So, randomness, weird animals, made up words. Let's get one more thing. What makes something funny? Shake, shake. Humor. Humor. Yeah, exactly. Humor pretty much is funniness. So, uh, definitely. So, here's kind of our list of ingredients for a good funny poem. We have randomness. We have weird animals and made up words and humor. So, to me, what makes something funny? Well, whether it's your friend farting in class, I'm hoping no one's ever done that, or Calvin getting attacked by his school lunch, funny things are funny because they are unexpected. You don't think they're going to happen, so kind of random. For example, you wouldn't expect a sneeze to be wet enough to soak a shawl or to be heard in outer space, but some of my favorite poets, such as Shel Silverstein, wrote funny poems, and I enjoy reading funny poems. Why do you think you might enjoy reading funny poems?
And you can do that kind of thing. That's um, poetic license. You can talk about that a little bit. Um, and so you can take something that happens in real life and sort of stretch it out. Well, now here's an example. All of you have sneezed before, right? Raise your hand if you've ever sneezed before. I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. Yeah, I'd be very suspicious of any of you who haven't. Well, I'm not sure if all of you have sneezed so hard that you soaked the cheese in a sandwich. Anyone done that? I'm hoping not. That's kind of gross. Well, I wrote a poem about a very impossible sneeze. So here's this poem. It's pretty long. The sneeze. I must hold in a dreadful sneeze. I beg you to excuse me, please. I know my trumpet is a great disgrace. I'm willing to accept my loss of face. I sneeze much to the public's dismay. I humbly beg you for me to pray. For I have the feeling that my soul is torn. It's not only my throat that's too well worn. I know that Lady Cunningham was disgusted. I know that I'm a scoundrel not to be trusted. I know that I shouldn't have come at all when I knew I might ruin the Countess's shawl. My grandma had to sell her brass samovar. My sneeze and the storm were quite on par. The lessons at school could barely be heard because I always sneeze through every word. Now half the household sick, the others died. My grandma spanked and my grandma cried. I swear now that I'm sneezing in fear, but I can't squeeze out a morning tear. I'm being shut up like a rabid dog. My windows are blocked with extra thick logs. And I can tell you it's no use to fight. There's a guard outside my door at night. I only got hankies for my present this year, that and a book of small font Shakespeare. I wish that my sneezes went to outer space. That way they wouldn't be such a waste. Maybe an alien would hear the noise and know of other living boys. Send an expedition to planet Earth. Then my sneeze would have some worth. But now from dreams I must retreat and try not to sneeze. I have to look neat to attend a party of great renown, the most important party in our town. All I can hope is that I don't have to talk because the sneeze will creep out like a slug from a rock and earn me another approving stare. Oh no, here's a sneeze, I tell you, beware. I sneezed on the sandwiches, soaking the cheese. I sneezed on the silver for catering the fees. I beg you to excuse me, please, oh please, forgive me for my deplorable sneeze. So that's uh, my poem, The Sneeze. And obviously it's take a thank you. Very long poem. And so if you think about it, I definitely exaggerate quite a bit. But let's say you sneeze when you're, uh, I don't know, walking onto a bus or something. And if you wrote a poem that was exactly true to life, it might go something like this. I sneezed when I was walking the bus. My friend said, bless you. A few minutes later, I forgot about it. That would be a very interesting poem, would it? No. No, probably not. So sometimes exaggeration can really work in your favor. And exaggerating can make things mundane as a sneeze into a terrifying and life-threatening situation, as in this example, and funny. So we can use our imagination to exaggerate real life events and turn them into exciting, interesting poems. Uh, okay, so uh, what do you think is something from your life that you can exaggerate? Maybe like Halloween one year, like you tripped and fell in a puddle of mud and lost all your candy? Yes, you could describe that very well. You could kind of describe the sickening moment when your candy is out everywhere. And uh, yes, yeah, so that, that would definitely be something to write about. And in fact, that one sounds interesting even without too much exaggeration. But yeah, that's very great. So, uh, I think just, I'm, I'm getting a little hungry, so I'm going to walk over to the kitchen and grab something to eat. Let's take a look. All in the name of poetry, of course. So there's the refrigerator. Unfortunately, but how do you think I can get my 
idea to write a poem from eggplants. What do you think, Justin? Um, maybe not exaggerating on how they draw, like if they draw, exaggerating that. Yeah, exaggerating. Um, and another thing I could do is, let's say I, I really don't like eggplants and I have to eat them in a meal, maybe exaggerating how gross their taste is or how awful I feel. Yeah, it's, it's so um, that would be a perfect thing to do. What else could we uh, write? How else could we get inspired for a poem from my plants? What do you think, Megan? Maybe like some, uh, maybe like one of your enemies or something would go up and start throwing eggplants at you or something. That's a very creative idea. That would be wonderful for a story. So maybe one of your enemies just takes us apart and starts throwing eggplants. I would do that actually, except in the moment they're pretty mad. So. Um, Eggplants. Um, here you have. They're not, they're not just edible, and they're not just pretty cool purple food. They're also poetry inspiration. So next time when you're heading over to the refrigerator or something, and sign up, that can be great poem. Now speaking of food, then I actually wrote a poem called Lunch, which is all about a gross meal. Why are you looking so gloomy? People will think that you're quite loony. I say this will cheer you up. Why don't we have a pick me up? Poison hog is a good place to eat just as long as you like meat. There's gory beef and bloody pork. Watch out, there's boar skin on your fork. Here's the special tortured duck. Oh, and here's another chicken luck. The waiter's coming, here he is. Would you like some cheddar fizz? Let's see, I'll have goose with moose. Would you like the lamb caboose? There's special cake of spam today, served to you on a fish head tray. Still not feeling like eating steak? Oops, my dear, my mistake. Just some home lunch. And it's all about this kind of gross meal at some kind of restaurant that serves some pretty disgusting types of meat. And you can do that, let's say, if you eat a meal you don't like at dinner or when you go to a restaurant, turn that into a poem. And uh, of course, the restaurant wasn't as bad as I, as I made it sound. We didn't have to really have tortured duck or cheddar bits, but I took some creative liberties in the poem, as you probably uh, realized. Now, um, something that I run into a lot is that when people do poems, they think of like, really beautiful, delicate flowers or something pretty. But when you write poems, you don't necessarily have to be writing about really pretty things. You could also be writing about things that you dislike, things that, like for instance, how much you loathe eating your vegetables, something like that. So here is an activity along that line. Write a poem that exaggerates an event or activity you don't want. So we're going to be doing this one together. Uh, so step number one is to choose an activity or event that you dread. So what do you really, really, really dread doing? So for example, taking the garbage out. Anyone want to give us an idea? What do you really, really dread doing? Ellen, doing homework. <laughs> doing homework? That's, uh, okay, what else? Okay, doing the dishes. Doing the dishes? Yep, yeah, those are infamously, oh, okay, dishes. Eddie, cleaning your room. Cleaning room, okay, what else? Michael, going to school. Oh, <laughs> let's, let's write the different one. We already have homework, so. Uh. Okay. Isaiah, walking. <laughs> walking the dog? <laughs> walking in general. Okay, so you would rather just sit and be wheeled along. Um, okay. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that one. All right, who else? Hannah, getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I can sympathize with that one. Justin, my dog, my dog, whenever I get home, basically eat that. Yeah. What was that? My crazy dog. Oh, you have to wash him? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, there we go. So, a bunch of tasks or activities that you dread. So, doing homework, washing dishes, cleaning room, walking in general, getting out of bed in the morning, and cleaning greasy dog. Now, think about what makes you dislike this activity or event so much. So, for instance, my taking the garbage out, it smells bad, it takes up time I could be spending doing something fun. What is it that you so dislike about cleaning your room? Too much effort. 
effort. Too much effort? Yes, uh, just like walking, it exerts too much effort. <laughs>
walking is pretty obvious. Okay, so let's write a poem about how hard it is to walk. <laughs> this is so funny that it's like not even. Well, it's fun. Okay, so. Uh, oh, and then the second thing is should we have it rhyme or should it not rhyme? Okay, right. Alrighty, so let's start with um, going back to the list of details. Okay, so how about the amount of effort it takes? Walking is so difficult. Walking is so difficult. It's really very hard. Um, and then we can rhyme the last line apart. Um, what is another thing to start walking? How is difficult it is? Michael, it uh, hurts so badly that your legs could fall off and you could like jump dead. Okay. <laughs> walking is so <laughs> difficult. It's really very hard. Your legs. Yeah. Hi. Your legs hurt so bad that they might fall off. Exaggerate those 
details and voila, you have your phone. Quick and very simple. So, uh, that is kind of one of the uh, easy first steps you can take. If you're stuck for an idea for a funny poem, you can just think about something you don't like to do and think about it. Tip number two, you can get lots of inspirations for poetry from the things that you see around you. So, for example, trees, houses, coats, sidewalks, plastic containers, snowflakes on the ground. When it comes to poetry, you also don't really have to stick with the facts. Again, this kind of poetic license, all you have to do is find something you want to write about, and you're pretty much free to do what you want. Um, let me... So, for instance, um, you can look at an everyday object, and instead of writing about it, write about what it brings to mind. So, when you look down at your table, what does that bring to mind? Albert. I could definitely see writing 
uh, a poem about that and maybe complaining a little bit. So, uh, whatever you learn about in school can provide all kinds of interesting material for poems. Uh, for instance, it would provide you with new words and new ideas that you could use in your poems. Here are some reptile words. These would be pretty cool to use in poems. Black mamba, vertebrate, striated, tetrapod, cold-blooded, scales, crocodilia, sphenodontia, squamata, testudines, animalia, three-chambered heart, atria, ventricle, selfies, inland taipan, and desert death adder. Who would like to have a desert death adder as a pet? I'm seeing some brave raised hands. I mean, I know. Like, I have a guinea pig right now, but imagine if, and, and she's like kind of in the entryway, so when people walk in, they see her, she's off to the side. Now, imagine if instead of that guinea pig right there, I could point to this weird creature and I'll say, hi, um, this is my desert death adder, by the way. You want to hold it? That might scare off some of the uh, marketers that come knocking. <laughs> All right, so reptile words, you can include those in poems. Here are, oh wow, I put way too much text on this, sorry, but here are some more ideas. You could write a poem inspired by something you found on the sidewalk. Anyone ever found something really interesting on the sidewalk? Lots of, sorry? 
And guess what? There was a nice long letter from the Tooth Fairy for him, so that was pretty cool. Sorry, that went off topic. Just about how I like having my name in print. You play any sports? Do I play any sports? Um, not too many. Actually, I sort of sympathize with the person who said they didn't like to walk because while I'm not that quite quite that extreme. Um, well, I mean, I like going on hikes and I like doing casual kind of stuff, but I I've never been a big like soccer person. Or, yeah. What made you want to become a writer? What made me want to become a writer? A lot of things. I would say one of the first things is that I really love to read, and I saw what these authors that I was reading, or what they were up to, and I thought, well, I want to do something kind of like that. I want to be like them. Oh. And so I started writing, and and I, uh, when I was six, my mom bought me my first computer, and I started typing it up, and soon I had this really big collection. Let me just quickly show you. Uh, so this, this is the um, amount of writing I had by the time I was uh, six, I believe. Oh, yeah. How and when did you get your first book published? How and when did I get my first book published? Good question. Well, I published uh, my first book, Flying Fingers, when I was seven. And it, I went through a lot of rejections from many different publishers, some children's publishers even saying they didn't work with children, which was a little strange. And then also, I, um, and then finally I called up this publisher, it was called Action Publishing, it was a small little publishing house in California, and I was lucky enough to get the publisher on the phone. And so uh, that was kind of how we really started with this journey that became the end result of Flying Fingers. Is there anything in particular that inspires you the most? Is there anything in particular that inspires me the most? Good question. I would say a lot of it is the authors that I read, uh, but also my family. My family always provides a lot of support, and they're always there for me. And they're also pretty comedic sometimes, so I get inspiration uh, a lot of times from them. Oh, and then another thing that provides inspiration, I, I just noticed this. Uh, stuffed tiger out of the corner of my eye. Animals always do provide a lot of inspiration, but I love her animal poems, and that's actually a good to with the animals. Elder? Elder? Have, you, have you ever um, written a poem out of anger? Have I ever written a poem out of anger? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, for instance, let's see, I might be able to find it actually. Uh, I once, well, I used to play piano and violin. Uh, I say used to because I no longer do, and one of the reasons, or at least maybe contributing a little bit, was because I love to write, and I wrote this poem about how bad I was at music, and how great I was at writing, and why uh, I, I should no longer have to play piano and violin. So that was one poem that I wrote kind of out of anger. Do I have a pet? Yes, I do. A guinea pig named Minnie, and she is kind of a tricolored guinea pig, very cute. Guinea pigs are uh, a type of rodent, and they look a little bit like rabbits, only without the ears, smaller, and less jumping power. And uh, my favorite kind of animal, well, I like guinea pigs a lot, obviously, since I have one, I'm a little partial, but I also love uh, certain types of dogs. I say certain types because other types freak me out. And, um, let's see. I also like, um, um, what is that odd in? Oh, platypuses. Platypuses. They're so cute. And, um, I'm drawing a blank. What are my favorite animals? Okay, let's we'll just stick it up there. Guinea pigs, platypuses, and certain types of dogs. And cats. What is your favorite book? I have a lot of favorite books. I love the Harry Potter series, Chronicles of Narnia, The Giver by Lois Lowry. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, any books by, well, let's see, Lord of the Rings, um, Anne Rinaldi's books, Gloria V. Lamb's books, uh, Catherine Hall Birdie's another good book. Yeah, all of those. And what's the hardest thing about writing poems? What is the hardest thing about writing poems? Well, for me, sometimes finding a good rhyme. I love to write rhyming poetry, and sometimes
sometimes when I just really want to find a rhyme, but I'm like, what rhymes with difficult, let's say. Difficult is a very difficult word to rhyme because not much rhymes with it. So, yeah, sometimes you'll get a really weird word that sounds great in the poem, but you can't rhyme a single thing in it. But that's always pretty hard. Amanda? Do you have any advice for kids who are starting to write? Yes, uh, I would say definitely don't worry what other people think of your writing because while it's great to get feedback, and comments from others, it's also important to write for yourself. And, and remember that you are one of your most important critics and that uh, when you begin writing, you should definitely be writing for yourself and not worry too much about what other people think. How long did it take until you published your first book? It took me about half a year to get it all put together and edited and all of that. Um, yeah, so about half a year. The, the stories themselves are pretty uh, straightforward. They only took a couple of weeks, but then, you know, putting them all together, editing that took a little while. What do you do when you're not writing poetry? What do I do when I'm not writing poetry? Um, I would say I do a lot of stuff when I'm not writing poetry. Writing poetry uh, is not like what I do as a full-time job or anything. I do it occasionally, but it's not full-time. Um, I would say, let's see, I love writing other kinds of things, like stories and blog posts. I also love uh, playing outside, drawing, cooking, reading, hiking, doing pretty much uh, a lot of things, and watching the news. If you're trying to write a story and you hit a wall, what do you usually do? Um, for me, I, I have a few different things I might do. Uh, one tip I've actually heard is to kind of uh, find the point where you have that wall and backspace until you're thinking, I I, you know, this is where I really want to continue from. So sometimes giving yourself a new start and taking out some things that kind of drove you into that wall. But then the second thing is maybe putting it away for a couple of days, letting your mind come up with new ideas, and then looking at it again.
And by the way, if any of you want to get in touch, you can definitely uh, go to my blog and leave comments, and you can also go to my website and write to me there. I'd be happy to write to you. Yeah, thank you very much.